What is up, everyone? My name is Hakilis, and this is my beautiful, beautiful wife, Birdie. And we're married now. I just realized I definitely didn't put my ring on for this. What's up, Zay? What's up, Wild Stew? What's up, Fatigue? Welcome to our virtual online uh, wedding reception, basically. We figured since we could only stream the ceremony and just a little bit of it at that, um, we would have a virtual reception with, reception with all of you and let you know what went into this crazy, crazy wedding that we basically um, planned in a month because the first one we had that we'd been planning for a year and a half kind of went down the drain with the rest of the world. So, what is up, Sawyer? What is up, Tech Geek? Um, fatigue, thank you so much. We got your present. It's amazing of you. You totally didn't need to do that. But thank you. Um, I haven't let you talk at all. Babe? Hi. What you got? <laughs> just hi. Just hi? After all week, just hi? It's been a long week. <laughs> It's been a very long week, um, starting with last Wednesday. If you've been on the stream already, you know this, but last Wednesday, the computer we used to stream and everything else with, the computer designed all our graphics for the wedding on just wink kaput. So, had to go out <laughs> and uh, spend $1,500, an additional $1,500, to get a brand new one that we're streaming on right now that you see. So, if it's a little clearer, that's why. Um, and yeah, so that's how the week started for me. Uh, what have you been up to all week? Um, <laughs> it's been a long, it's been a long week. We're starting on Wednesday. Just wedding. Just wedding. <laughs> okay. So I think the best place to start that's is what I, I'm like, I don't know how far back you want to start. What you want to talk about? <laughs> Tony, it has been years, but finally, I am married. Are you going to put your wedding ring on? Yeah, I guess I should. Are you going to... Which one? The the regular one. Oh, good. <laughs> Let's see. This week, I took I only took two days off of work because I'm a school teacher and there's a... Uh... There you go. There you happy? <laughs> It's the beginning of a new order. Yeah, a place. Just don't be weird. Stop saying big chungus. We're talking about love. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I guess the best place to start with this. First of all, we're having pizza because we told you guys we'd have a pizza party reception. So if you got your pizza, go ahead and eat. Um, the best place to start with this would be... January 17th. Uh, <laughs> January 17th, 2011 was the day we officially got together after three days... Uh, of waiting because I asked her out three days before that. Do they know even before that? Should yeah, we pretty start much. at the beginning, beginning? No. <laughs> I just want to start with the, the original wedding plans. Okay. All right. So pull out your book. Because the original wedding plans was supposed to be much different from what you guys <laughs> saw. Um, we had planned to get married at a gigantic venue. Some would say a theater, actually. Because it was a theater. It is a theater. What do, you, what do you mean some would say? It's called Fox Theater. Solo, you have Pocky? Pocky rules. Pocky is delicious. Fox Theater <clears throat> Redlands. I'll pull it up and show you all right now. I love Fox Theater. Or I love Pocky. While, you're, Fox theater. while you're setting that up, the original idea was to have the wedding at a big venue we were going to invite like 175 people all of our family and friends and co-workers um it was going to be a huge thing uh and the date has always been january 17th 2021 that has been the one thing about this wedding that hasn't changed because that is our it was our 10 year like dating anniversary and so even the day that he proposed he proposed march 5th of May. 2019 yes thank you may 5th of 2019 <laughs> the first thing i said was oh, january 17th 2021 is on a sunday and it's a three-day weekend so it has always been that day you ready yeah 
<laughs> so this was the original venue. We went, we saw five venues, different like different golf courses, different places, churches. Um, but we kind of really liked the vibe of this place. It was super unique, super original. Um, oh, that's too small. It is very small. <laughs> just show them. That's fine. Um, but they host all sorts of events. And it was just, it was really cool. So we had this cool idea. They do a red carpet entrance. They have um, just all sorts. Yeah, we were going to do super old Hollywood type thing. Right. Uh, we had, they have these. Uh... The cent- We bought like old fashioned film reels that were going to be part of the centerpieces. We had um, what what he's pointing out right now. You is... can see these uh, like movie posters outside. We we're gonna make our own movie posters and post them up. Just ideas going nonstop. Uh, it did. It was going to cost a lot of money. Uh, in total, the venue itself was going to be about eight grand, which is not that bad actually for wedding venues, mm. but. The, that was without food, without de- decorations. I I would say all in all, our budget for the wedding was like twenty thousand dollars or so. Um, we were gonna do, uh, we were gonna have like a big bar. We were gonna do a whole concession stand for cocktail hour. In fact, my stepdad started building it. Um, it was gonna be like this big board and we were going to buy all sorts of boxed candy that people could, you know, just go grab just like a movie theater. Um, a we red, had a lot of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> red carpet entrance. And this was all pretty much planned. We had, um, well, so this is the 2021 <laughs> Sentai. Yeah, basically. <laughs> My wallet size and relief being single again. <laughs> this is exactly like, and, and so my sister, his wedding was March 13th of 2019. So like right the weekend before the pandemic like kicked off for the U S um, and her wedding was probably double what ours was going to be like cost way more wise. expensive cost yeah. wise. We were going to have the same amount of people. She just had, it was a very, very different vibe that we were going for. So weddings, super expensive. <laughs> also, if you want to have like the insane amount of people that we had super expensive. Yeah. The original idea, too, for food, I mean, y'all know us by now. We're not super fancy people. We um, we were going to do a Habit Burger truck, um, and we were super excited. So my dream always, like, growing up, I didn't really envision what my wedding was going to be like. I just always knew I wanted an in-and-out truck. Like, that was it. But when we started looking into it, we realized that the In-N-Out truck doesn't do french fries. Um, they just, and they only do like singles or doubles. But if we looked, we looked into Habit, Habit does french fries, drinks, you could pick up to four different <laughs> burgers. Um, and it was all, it was, a, the Habit truck ended up being a lot better and it was cheaper than In-N-Out was too. And so we had already, so we paid the deposit on the Habit truck we paid the deposit on the venue. We started buying decorations. We started getting everything together. <laughs> the original the original invite list uh, had a lot more people, including Cuate Gordo and Cuate Flaco. Do not worry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was a whole lot different. But Which is why we picked this place, because right. it could it could fit so many people. Which is what we wanted. Um, and the habit, like she said, because we are super... Okay, but In-N-Out fries are F-tier and fast food fries. Listen here, Tony. <laughs> you Texas what a burger loving Wait, hold on. You Texas <laughs> what a burger loving just absolute taste budless person. In-N-Out. In and Out is the best burger, and the animal style fries are ridiculous. We will not take animal style fries. Uh, what is it called? Blasphemy in this chat. There we go. Uh, proceed, babe. Sorry. I just put a big bite in my mouth. 
<laughs> Listen, I can stomach the burger, but the fries are trash. Tony? You've been timed out once. I was going to say, are you going to time them out again? Those are fighting words. Never had In-N-Out or Five Guys or any place like them. Five Guys is pretty good. Five Guys is like super greasy too. If you want fast food, we just have McDonald's and Burger King. McDonald's being the better of the two, at least over here. Yeah, and I'm not a big fan of Burger King, but McDonald's, we do chicken nuggies. If you don't have In-N-Out, I cannot blame you. Just don't uh, just don't blaspheme me on In-N-Out's name. Don't blaspheme. Blaspheme. Five guys is way better than In-N-Out. Okay, well, let me... Uh... Are you really timing him out this time? All right, Tony, here, we're going <laughs> to... Where are you at? There we are. Time out. It doesn't even give me options of how long to time out for. You're lucky. I don't know how I to work this thing. I will say. We have Culver's. My Midwest people know. I've never had Culver's. I've had Wawa. I was going to. That's what I. Sorry. That's what I was going to say. It's not real. It's more. Is it Midwest or is it East? Mid East. Wawa is like East South. Mm. Wawa is great. Wawa is delicious. Wawa is all over the East Coast. If you're there, go for it. Never had sheets, but I've had Wawa. When we got engaged was when we had Wawa. <laughs> Savage hog. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I don't know how to use this Twitch Twitch dashboard thing. <clears throat> Isn't Wawa a gas station? Yes. <laughs> it is. Wawa. So like when I first, I took her to Wawa for the first time the weekend I proposed. Yes. And I took her and I was like, I was like, hey, it's a gas station. Do not be alarmed, but we're going to have Wawa. She's like, that sounds dumb. It's a gas station. We went to Wawa three times that weekend because she loved it so much. Do not sleep on Wawa. It is absolutely a gas station and it's the best gas station you've ever had. They had really big M&M cookies. Yeah, they, do. they have great shakes too. Go <laughs> Like the if you have the chance, their quesadillas, mwah. if you have a chance, go to Wawa. Don't even don't even ask about it. Just go. You guys need to go to Bucky's. Bucky's is amazing. I've never been to a Bucky's. I've heard good things. I've also heard good things, or I've also been to a a cookout. I don't know if you have those in Texas, but cookouts are good. Uh, Rudy's are good. Rudy's is also like Rudy's a gas station thing. Biggest gas station you will ever see. I've never been to a no. Loves out here. What is it in in Texas? When I visit my best friend we go to some chicken place and they have the best iced tea i've ever had chicken express is that what it's called is it called chicken express look it up chicken express rudy's is good yeah the closest rudy's to us is arizona and my uncle's oops my uncle absolutely loves rudy's chicken express menu they have fried okra yep this is it but dude look up bucky's gas station is huge Chicken Express has, I don't, I'm not a big fan of iced tea, but Chicken Express sweet tea, it's delicious. Bucky's Gas Station. Oh my God. Oh God. Is it a gas station or a Walmart? I mean, it's like, it's a, it's a Loves basically. Oh yeah. That's not a gas station. That looks like a grocery store. It's a Loves basically. Chicken Express is great, but usually only see it in rural areas. Yep. Panda Express is one of our favorites. We had Panda Express yesterday. We did. <laughs> um, my best friend lives in uh, Granbury, which is like right outside of Fort Worth. So it's uh, definitely a, classified as a rural, rural, a rural, rural, a rural area. Yeah, that. I don't know where they need that. It's my speech impediment. The R <laughs> U's are hard. But as y'all know, March of 2019, world goes to absolute garbage, and uh, coronavirus happens. So, in the wake of coronavirus, we can no longer have our wedding at the beautiful Fox Theater of Redlands. At this point, we've submitted a deposit for $1,500, which we basically can't get back. Yeah, they basically told us, like, you're... They basically you're said, hey, we have no money, uh, so you can reschedule your wedding, or you're out of luck. And, uh, yeah, which, like, we get because, like, most businesses... Are struggling. Are struggling, right have no money, especially if your main business is like large events like this. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, all we did is put a deposit down. We didn't pay for anything else. We didn't we didn't have any meetings or anything. Yeah, we were we were some of the lucky ones. Yeah, there, we were we were right at the beginning of the process. One of my friends was supposed to get married in June and had paid everything already, like all the final payments and everything, and 
her venue told her the same thing. No money back or nothing. So she had to move her wedding twice. Is the tablecloth as nice as it looks? We're thinking about getting one too. We haven't opened them yet, actually. Or we opened them, but like... We have... We opened them to see what they were, but we haven't, like, opened the box. We haven't, like, took it, made a look at it. Did you do the deposit with a credit card? No. Nope. Specifically <laughs> told we had to do cash or check. Yep. Cashier's <laughs> check. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we've we been trying to get that deposit back. I don't know if it's going to happen. And if it doesn't, it sucks. But at the end of the day, it's just money. You make more of it. Like, it is what it is. I understand. Birdie's not as understanding, <laughs> but it is what it is. Because um, it's a it's a big chunk of money. That's another computer. It is another computer, correct? But so, what we ended up going with was we tried to look at a few different places, <clears throat> all outdoor places. Um, we looked at like one of his sister's church, but it wasn't big enough for what we wanted to do and then my grandma's house had like a an outdoor amphitheater that was really good but the problem with that we that was like our second plan and then i went all into planning that so the fox theater we had 85 percent planned things were bought paid for in the in the works and then covid happened and then i would say from like March until October, we still had hope that we could have it at the theater. I specifically remember it was in October when they canceled the Rose Parade. And I was like, oh, shit. Yep. October. So up until October, we're like, we're still having our wedding at the Fox Theater. We'll be great. Things will open up. Things never opened up. So October, it became became kind of like a like okay, what's we what's really next? need a second plan. We need to figure it out. Um, it wasn't until the end of October, until we what is the rose parade? Are you serious? It's not even like a, that's like a national thing, Tony. <laughs> the rose parade is the the gigantic parade on January first that they have, and it marches right through um, Pasadena. Pasadena, which is probably 20 minutes away from us and all the floats are made out of flowers and plants yeah or decorated with flowers and plants the rose parade is basically america's new year's day parade yes um but at the end of the day we are we are married and that is all that matters (laughs) you don't follow parades nobody follows parades they're just on tv when you when you wake up late on new year's day you just wake up and put the rose parade on the tradition tony it plays in the background what are you doing (laughs) um but yeah, so I would say about the end of October, we made the decision to completely refigure out the wedding. Uh, and as much as we wanted to take a break for the holidays, like January was right after that. So not that things went on hold, but they definitely slowed down. But the one thing we were able to do was get our wedding venue in order. Thank to, thanks to Bertie's grandpa. Yes. So the amphitheater at my grandma's house wanted to charge money, but couldn't guarantee we could have our wedding there on that date. And we were like, no, nah, we're not doing that again. We're not paying more money if we're not for sure going to do it. Um, so then, oh, this was even, by that time, it was like November. I think is when we finally asked, like, okay, it's November. We really need to figure something out. And that's when I asked, Uh, my grandpa and I was like hey this is our plan what do you think and he is older so we wanted to be respectful and like make sure he felt comfortable with everything um before this by the way the first thing we did was cut down the guest list to like less than half of the people um I think we both kind of decided early on that like hey our wedding is going to be more for our grandparents and those kind of people uh, when I say those kind of people, older people, obviously. Um, so we wanted to make it as safe as possible. That was like the number one thing is like, how do we do it for them? Because I don't want to have a wedding without my grandfather who like I grew up with and raised me for half my life. Um, and still like be safe enough and have him come and still have the wedding that we want. So her grandpa's house happens to be uh, a quite big 
place. And one of the main attractions of it was they have two rock labyrinths around. And this is just kind of a picture of one of them. But as you can see here, this is where the reception is. They're setting up the tent. Like this is a f uh, basketball. It's a basketball. It's a full size basketball court. Basketball court. And like. Oops, they're setting up the tent here. And it's pretty big. This is where we had the reception. The ceremony was down by this labyrinth. It is super nice to the point where like there are so many people that were like, oh, I thought this was your actual first wedding venue. And it wasn't. So that was cool. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, this isn't like my grandpa's house. Like I grew up coming here and um, that's yeah, that before the arch was set up, that's where the ceremony was. That's oh, that's the... that's kind of a funny picture. So we uh, y'all, we planned it to be outside because it's safer outside. But we were trying to do everything we could to make it COVID safe, COVID friendly. Um, so mm -hmm. because we thought it was going to be cold, you know, outside in January, we had this cute idea of making individual s'mores bags and we were going to have a bonfire. Um, so this is my aunt and my sister um, <clears throat> and they were masked up and gloved up and they were putting together these s'more bags. So everything at the wedding was individually packaged um, and there was hand sanitizer all over the place. So uh, just trying to make it as safe as possible. Do you have the, the donut hole picture? Oh, that, I mean, that's uh, cute I have too, one but... from Justin, yeah. Yeah. Choo, choo, choo. So here's the donut holes they made individually, pa individually packaged. Like she said, everyone was wearing gloves and masks when they were packaging, packaging them, which was cool to me. Um, just so people can grab them and go. Nobody's like grabbing out of the same bowl or anything. Um, but like Brody was saying, they wanted s'mores and they wanted an open fire to make these s'mores. <clears throat> oh, are you, you're going to be this dramatic? It was 90 degrees outside the day of our wedding. Okay. There was no fire. There were no s'mores. That's the... Un Who knew? Who knew? I know California winters aren't really winters. But y'all, for how long? We had been checking the weather forever <laughs> because we were worried about an outdoor wedding in January. One, because it was going to be cold. And two, because it was going to rain. Well... Y'all, it just so happened it was 66 degrees, 66 degrees all the way. That was the high all the way until a week before the wedding. And then what happens a week before the wedding? The temperature jumps to 88 degrees. And we're like, oh, well, do you have a picture of the blankets, the favors that we did? We, we, had, we were like, okay, it's going to be cold, but we'll make it work. So we bought blankets um that we like wrapped in this cute saying it said to have them to hold in case you get cold um we were gonna put them on the reception our ceremony chairs we bought everyone hand warmers y'all we did not use those we didn't <laughs> use all. the blankets we didn't even we at least put the blankets out those are nice to take home um we did not use the hand warmers didn't put them out we never started the fire because it was just far too it was far too hot <clears throat> But it was another nice little memento for people to be able to take home. So, I mean, I'm okay with it, but. So it all came together. Here is our uh, cake pops that we gave to everyone because we didn't want to serve cake and have everybody like share around the same cake, if that makes sense. So we had cake pops, take one, take two, um, and be on your way. And then we had this little cake right here that we cut together. So cut to morning of and birdie. No, don't show that picture. Oh. Has a migraine, obviously, <laughs> as most people do on their wedding day. Look at how beautiful she is. Oh, whatever. That's an <laughs> awful picture. All right. Sorry. I'll start picking up the real pictures. So here we go. Here's you getting ready. Yep. That's my mom. She's helping me put my veil in place. But he's he's not wrong. I get migraines and headaches really, really easily. Um, I'm also just more of a tomboy than anything else. So um, I really didn't want anything too fancy with my hair or with my makeup or anything. So it's just a simple braid with my hair pulled back. Because, um, again, no headaches or no, no bueno. So <laughs> there's that. That's a cute one. 
me and my mom. Getting your veil ready. A lot of, uh, we don't have all the pictures so far. A lot of what we did have is like right before and then the ceremony. So here's the donut hole set up. The little centerpieces. We had sanitizer everywhere. Yeah, we had all these signs. Please sanitize before you grab refreshments. We had some in the bathroom. And then we put uh, the D plus B stickers on all the sanitizer. So it was pretty cute, I think. <laughs> Our uh, table. This setting. was so hard. Harder than normal because we wanted to make sure that like people were distanced enough. And so just setting the tables out, period, was challenging to try and figure out how to get six feet between the tables. But then the ta the seating chart itself, we didn't want to mix households. Making sure each table had like its own bubble of people. Like one table is my family. One table is her family. One table um, is my extended family who have seen each other all throughout the quarantine and have mix and match basically. And her extended family that have mixed and match. Um, but we weren't trying to like intertwine any of those people. And the seating at the wedding was set up the same way. Um, yeah, we put that the ceremony, the chairs were spread out um, and they were all movable so people could move them around. We were really trying our best to be absolutely as safe as possible. This table up here you can see has less people. That's because those were all kind of loose people that weren't in any bubble that was there. So we put them at a table with less people so that they can stay spread apart. It was all, there was a lot of thought put into all of it. These are the mm. table settings. You want to tell them about the birds? What about the birds? These birds. There's black and white ones. Okay, first of all. I proposed on May 5th of 2019. Hundreds of these birds were bought. Not on, hundreds, chill. On okay. May 9th of 2019. The day after we got back from Florida. So I asked him, I was like, what do you, what are you thinking decoration wise? What are you feeling? He's like, I, I really like birds and arrows. And I was like, that's cool. Because first of all, he's been calling me birdie for years before Hawkeyes ever existed. So birdie has been around for much longer than Hawkeyes has, just so you know. Um, but we found these birds and they were just simple, <clears throat> elegant looking birds. Um, but again, when I started planning this wedding, it was planning for a hunt. Wait, go back for a second. Oh, sorry. We were planning for 175 people, which is upwards of 25 tables. So each bird got two tables and then you have, you know, decoration around. We had like cocktail tables. So we bought when I bought these birds, we bought enough for what we thought we needed. But all of a sudden, when your guest list goes from 175 to, we ended up with a guest list of like 50, 55 people. It's a lot different. You go from 25 tables to eight tables. Mm -hmm. So we had birds everywhere, but those are also individual hand sanitizers for each person there. Individually boxed charcuterie boards, mm -hmm. which my mother, and aunt and sister stayed up super late the night before making each of them had like fancy cheeses uh fruit in it skewers of meat and stuff it was it was awesome um, it tastes they tasted so good and again we wanted that individual packaging to make sure that everything was as safe as possible and the centerpieces are all like fake flowers so we were able to do those ahead of time but we did all the flowers ourselves um, because again, we wanted to, not only did we want to minimize the guest list, we wanted to minimize the like people involved. Mm -hmm. So like the person who made the cake was someone who was already invited to the wedding. The flowers were all done by me and my mom. The charcuterie traits were, <clears throat> trays were all made by his family who were all coming. Because again, we didn't the want- The was done by me and there was no one sitting there <laughs> during the ceremony, which is why I cut out early. I am sorry. Yeah. We wanted to make sure- We didn't want outside vendors because that just introduced another person into the safe bubble we were trying to create. Um, but that was the- That's the sweetheart table. Um, we don't- We're not big alcohol drinkers, so you can't really see it, but we used- mugs instead because again we were expecting 66 degrees 
you guys really thought this through and I love every bit of it. So sweet. Thank you. It wasn't, <laughs> it was more out of necessity. Like, like I said, the people we wanted there, like my friends will understand. We can go hang out and celebrate our marriage at some other point, but the people we really wanted there were like our grandparents and those kind of people. So like the only way to do this was the safest way possible, which is like what we really, really tried. Yeah. And the arches came from his sister. Yeah, the arches were for a quinceanera that was supposed to happen like three weeks after quarantine happened that never happened. So we just stole these uh, stole these arches from my brother and my sister-in-law. Shout out to them. But the, the cake, the next picture is funny. The cake, it was so hot that the cake pop started melting. As you can see them falling down right here. But they still tasted absolutely delicious. They were so good. Those are the, so we had three different flavors. We had his flavor was Oreo. My flavor was chocolate peanut butter. And then our flavor was strawberry lemonade. And yep. it was all delicious. <laughs> Is the setup with our cake in front of the cake pops and everything. Yep. Again, more sanitize. Yeah, more, more sanitizer everywhere. More birds everywhere. We had individual packaging so that if someone wanted to take a cake pop home, they could take it home. There's our candles for our 10 year anniversary. And our center, our cake topper was <clears throat> our signature D plus B. Um, so do they know what the D plus B came from? No. No? Mm. So way back when Dylan and I first got together, I used to have a whiteboard in my bedroom, like my childhood bedroom. And I think it was mom's wedding when yeah. you wrote it for the first time. So we got together. Oh, wait, we weren't even together at mom's wedding. Man, now I want a cake pop strawberry lemonade. It sounds great. It was so good. The strawberry lemonade was not the most popular flavor. It wasn't. I will say the Oreo was the most popular flavor. Oreo was the most popular, strawberry lemonade, chocolate peanut butter after that. They were all sure. amazing. And the pie is, uh, or the cake is banana cream cake. It is. It was so good. But he, he came in my whiteboard and he drew a D plus B with a heart around it. And then ever since then, he's just been drawing it on random things everywhere. Like the whiteboard in my classroom has a D plus B on it. My whiteboard back here has a D plus B on it. It's kind of like, our little thing. So that's why you see the D plus B on all on everything because it's like his sweet little note to me. Next up, we get to the actual ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> all these pictures, by the way, uh, Justin Cotterell, he's a, an amazing photographer. He does uh, events like this stuff. He does a lot of wrestling photography, he does a lot of fashion photography. You can find him on Instagram at electric sleep images. He's absolutely amazing. Go check him out for anything you need. Um, but he, yeah, I got him to shoot this cause like super trust the guy and he did an amazing job and he got us these pictures like the next day. <laughs> these cute gestures make my heart melt D plus B forever and always now. Aww. Um, but getting down to it, our, what do you call him? Minister. Minister is actually her brother because when we were planning the wedding, we were thinking about like, okay. Minister is going to be the person in every single picture with uh, with us. And we didn't want that to be just anyone. And the original groomsman bridal party was kind of off balance. Um, she had a lot more than I did. Hey, thanks for the follow, Jack Eves. Um, yeah, the original bridal party was kind of off. We were off by one guy. We had... Which ended up happening anyways. But we were <laughs> off by one. How are you doing, Jack Eves? Um, we're off by one, so I thought, hey, if there is anyone I want in every single picture of us getting married, it would be her brother. He's been, like, we've grown up together. He's been there for all of it. He knows everything. Dude is just one of my best friends in life. Well, you've known him since, we've known each other since I was 12, and my brother was eight. Eight years old. I remember, so. I remember, like, marking out and popping off about the Ben 10 Omni tricks that he had <laughs> when he was eight years old and we were playing with it. Like that's how, that's how early I've known this kid. So I was like, if I want anybody there in every single picture that we're getting married, it's, it's him. And he basically was, so <laughs> this is when everybody started walking down. There's my sister and her husband. And we had, um, my, oh, thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> my cousin made these masks for us. Um, with a D plus B heart on them, so. Ours say Mr. and Mrs. Cassiano on the sides. Yeah. 
There is Adrian Quest and her sister. And her maid of honor. Christina. And did you want to say anything? <laughs> no, we we don't. I, I don't know if we just don't have it yet because we don't have all the pictures. But his little sister walked down in a tux with my little sister. Um, they were the first ones to walk out. Um, do you want to tell them why Christina's alone? Or Oh, uh, so my best man that I had coming, uh, his name is Andy Brown. He is one of my best friends he and unfortunately in november he made the decision to move to florida um in that move it was it, like i was like hey you gotta come back for my wedding and it just couldn't end up happening because of all the circumstances so uh maid of honor had to walk down by herself which is totally fine and then it all worked out those are my nieces that is scooter on the right and growler on the left <laughs> And the blonde, that is my niece. Uh, that is our other niece, Jumpin', Jumpin Jax. Jax. If you haven't noticed, I come up with nicknames for every single child <laughs> in my life. We were supposed to have another flower girl. Um, unfortunately, two days, three days before the wedding, um, she found out that she was exposed to COVID. So unfortunately, she wasn't able to make it to the wedding. And it was a really hard decision. Um, because she did get a negative test, but there it just wasn't it wasn't the ten days in order for us to feel safe and same for her. And um, it's my sister's stepdaughter, and my sister's also pregnant, so it was a really hard decision. But we ended up um, we kind of put together a wedding in a box for for her, um, and we we put her dress in there and her flower girl gift and some favors from the wedding, and we drove it over to her house. Um, and so she was able, she put her dress on and she, um, threw some flowers and we were able to video chat with her. So it was still really special, but it's, it does suck. It's it, something yeah. it's like, it's one of the risks that we knew would happen going in there. And it's something we had to talk about a bunch of like, Hey, what are the parameters where if someone comes to us four or five days before the wedding, what is the timeline where it would be like, Hey, like 0% chance, like. It's just if if my mom showed up two days before and was like, hey, I've been exposed, like I would have said, hey, that's it. Sorry. Like, like you just can't come like that's that's was one of the reasons we really had to have the stream up there. And by the way, you can see it right here with nobody there. Um, <laughs> that's one of the reasons we like decided on the stream, because at the end of the day, we knew people that we loved and wanted there weren't going to be able to be there. Um, no matter what the circumstances and you guys showed up for it too. Like we had tons of people watching. So I love you all for that. We also had planned to uh, show, uh, actually talk about when the got to run later. Kwate, love you Thanks for coming. So here's my little sister. We were talking about before. Um, you can't really see her in this suit. Let me drop us for a second. There's my little sister in the suit. It like was like really important to me that she wore a suit because she was on the groomsman side. And basically, uh, my mother and father are kind of traditional. So when this talk came up that I wanted my sister in a suit, which is at the end of the day, something she wanted, something she was real happy with. I like basically ended up telling them that, look, if the groomsmen are supposed to be my best friends up there, I'm not doing it without Sawyer on my side. And I kind of don't want like one person wearing a dress on the groomsman side. I just think it would look weird aesthetically. So we did it. We got Sawyer in a suit for anyone that was wondering what Sawyer looked like because you'd never seen her before. She's always in chat. There is Sawyer. Well, Snubble too. And there is Snubble right there. When I said um, that was my sister walking out with her husband, that was Snubble. That was Snubble and Jack. And this is when the girls are walking down, the flower girls. See how happy I am. And there is the bride herself. That's me. Coming down to marry me by train, which I've been humming for the last five days. <laughs> Since it happened. <laughs> Since it happened. Walking down the aisle. You guys saw this part. You saw this part. But the pictures are so nice. The pictures are beautiful. I love these pictures. Like, Justin absolutely killed it. Yeah. When I suggested Justin to Birdie, she doesn't really know him. So she was like, yeah, okay, I guess. Like, wedding photographers, always going to be expensive. Justin, 
probably one of the cheapest wedding photographers we found that was like a real professional. Well, and when it came down to it, we we had a few options, but we were like, do we want to give this money to strangers or like help a homie out a little bit? And like, <clears throat> we just ended up deciding if we're going to give our money to anyone, um, we're going to give it to someone that we know and someone that we trust. Uh, so we ended up with Justin. Yeah. Uh, I kept the beard because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know how to shave it the night before. I like lined it up a little bit, his face but I thought I was going to like screw it up way too much. So I didn't end up shaving at all. There's me basically in tears. <laughs> all my grooms people. And then the kiss. Justin, the, the kiss that everyone else missed. I know because this is where the stream cut. And I'm telling you when I was cutting the video together on the YouTube, if you haven't seen it, our wedding videos, youtube.com slash Achilles. If you haven't seen it, the stream cuts out of the kiss. Not only that, though, every single person that was recording video doesn't have the kiss. It doesn't exist anywhere but in this moment. But luckily we have it in this picture. Like, thank you, Justin. <laughs> no. So what happened was originally we were going to ask. Um, his brother to sit there and take care of it. But then his brother ended up not being able to come either. Um, and so what happened was the laptop right here, it timed out. So, you know, if you don't touch it for a while, it goes to sleep. So the laptop went to sleep literally at that moment. And if I were to pick any moment for it to go out, it probably went out at the perfect moment, but like, it still sucks. <laughs> Nobody got to see the kiss, but luckily we have it in pictures there's us walking back and true to my word we sat at the laptop to say hi to you guys and we yep. were gonna say we love you and everything and sign off and that's when it was dead you can see the concern on her face my face is just well nothing we can do about it like yep this is him literally laughing because like we're live pal he, he this is him like turn around being like it turned off and this is me going are you serious are you <laughs> are you serious at this point we had no idea when it turned off as soon as we got to the back someone was like oh yeah it turned off right at the kiss which i was more than okay with because at least you heard the vow at least you saw everything. all of it yeah and then here's the rock labyrinth up top <laughs> All so, my groom's been walking it. It's super it's superstitious for you to walk over the sides of a labyrinth. It's supposed to be like bad luck. And uh the person who built the labyrinth was my grandma, and she unfortunately passed away a few two years ago. Almost maybe. two years ago now. Yeah. And so I I was just gonna be like, okay, pause for a second and like, you know, send my vibes up to her and be like, okay, we're gonna walk over the rocks, but thank you so much. We can take our pictures. And the groomsmen were like nah man we're gonna do it we're gonna walk it so they walked all the labyrinth just to get to the center and they're like we don't we don't want to mess with it so they did it they did the whole walk it was great i don't have all the pictures for this yet uh because this is kind of where uh it cut off or we stopped i'll get them in the next couple of days and i'll just share them with you guys on social media and stuff but coming up we have the money shots yeah this is probably my favorite picture we have so far just the way the sun is coming through the trees and just everything about it is. There's us, Labyrinth. Next one. Oh, do you have the side by side? I do. So this so... picture is because this picture is January 17th, 2021. And this picture is sometime in May of 2011. This is our first. Uh, year of dating this was her prom we had been together for like three months we would, yeah and i wanted to recreate this picture and that was the one thing the one like direction we gave justin is like hey we want this picture recreated so we went from that to that and that's why at the end of the video today you see the uh it like fades out yeah you see those pictures go from one another and then the rings I bought this ring almost two years ago. That's adorable. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, it was I like when Justin was like, oh, what pictures do you want? Do you have a shot list? I was like, I have absolutely no idea. 
but I want this prom picture. We also have it above our um the TV. Above our TV. You printed, printed it. It's printed on wood. I got it for for Christmas a few years ago. Yeah. And I really wanted that other picture so we can print them this one on wood and have them side by side. But now what he doesn't know, or what we talked about after, is like every ten years we're gonna recreate that picture and just have a bunch of them. Now, I, the now I started a tradition. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's only it's every ten years though. I think we can handle it. Do you want to tell them about your ring and why you're wearing a different one? Yeah, these are the rings. Obviously, not the ring I'm wearing right now. This one's silver. That one's gold. Um, this ring belonged to my grandfather in his marriage with my grandmother, who passed away when I was 2001. So I was 11. No, nine. I'm dumb. I was nine years old. She passed away right before September 11th, 2001. And uh, he passed that ring down to his daughter. Who he's my great grandfather, so his daughter would is my aunt or my great aunt or something like that. Um, and she decided that she wanted me to have it when I proposed to Bertie, and I couldn't not get married with it. Like there's just like I, my grandma was such a big part of my life at the time, has always been. That, uh, yeah, this meant a lot to me. So. I got married with this ring. It is two sizes too big for me because my grandpa has man hands and I have little little wimpy hands. Um, he was like in Vietnam and stuff, so he's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he worked on like jets and stuff. So big hands, uh, two sizes too big for me. So I'm not gonna wear it all the time. Uh, it's it's more of a formal type thing. I'm gonna wear it for like events and such. I was thinking about getting a chain and wearing it like around my neck most of the time. Uh, Birdie's ring is. A ring I bought a while ago, uh, specific specifically for her, and then <clears throat> she'll pass it down to other people. Who knows? Yeah, we were so we didn't buy a band for the ring because, of course, it's like, oh, we have all the time in the world. That but is incorrect. Then... I didn't buy a band for the ring when I bought it because it was way too expensive, and okay. I thought, okay, I'll buy it later. Yes. Well, well, we thought we had time to buy it later. <laughs> well, the world closed and COVID happened. And then once malls and everything started opening up again, they're like, hey, we actually discontinued that ring. <laughs> like the band is discontinued as Nowhere well. Nowhere to be found. <laughs> and we're Nowhere. like, well, is there something else that can fit with it? And they're like, actually, no, because... Because of how it's like offset, it's like a like kind of like an S shape situation, um, and they were like, they were like, you you're just gonna have to get one custom made, and it just wasn't in the cards for the time frame. So I don't have a wedding band yet, and honestly, I I mean, I'm, I don't my need fault, one. completely my fault. No, it's not your <laughs> fault. Who would have thought? Before COVID, we went and they're like, oh yeah, the ring, like the band is here, great. And then just after, not even, well, there is no after COVID yet, but once things started opening up, they were like, oh yeah, we just, we redid our stores and those are all gone. Gone. The only- <laughs> That whole collection, gone. We were able to find one online for a reasonable <laughs> price, but the website it was on is called I Do, But Now I Don't. Fantastic <laughs> website. If you're looking for uh, <laughs> wedding merchandise, go check it out. I Do. But now I don't. And it's, Amazing. It's all just like people who are no longer getting married and trying to sell their rings and their wedding dresses. And I was like, you know, I don't want that kind of bad juju <laughs> on plus, the ring. Plus it was the ring and the band together. Like you couldn't just buy the band itself. Yeah. So I figured like for some anniversary, we'll just replace her ring. I don't want to replace it. We'll buy her another ring because just she still wears... She still wears her promise ring from eight years ago. Yeah, you gave this to me Christmas, a year after we've been... I've had this ring for nine years. She's got ten fingers. Eventually, she's going to run out. <laughs> well, I'm just going to keep buying rings. The So his silver ring is also his, uh, his promise ring from eight and a half years ago. I think you got me this for Christmas, and I got you that for your birthday. Yeah, right after. Right afterwards. COVID did really mess up a lot of things, especially for this. But like at the end of the day... I look back at Sunday and cannot think of this happening any other way. There was <laughs> one of my favorite moments on Monday. So we, after the wedding, we stayed in a hotel for two days just to kind of like, just be together and be in like la la land like this. We were like this for two days straight, just like 
whatever. We're just staring <laughs> at each other, happy giddy, still kind of are. But there before the wedding, I was like, I was like, Hawk, I can't, I don't want to do this again. Cause we were always talking about doing something small now. And then like two years from now, having a big party with everyone. But I was like, I don't want to do it again. Like this is so stressful and it's costing, it didn't cost a lot of money. We definitely saved. Like we only spent a quarter of what we had originally planned. Less than that. Yeah. We saved a ton of money, but I don't know. I was just like, I don't want to do it again. And then on Monday, we were like just sitting in bed watching TV. And he looks at me and he goes, you know, or were we in the car? I think we're in bed. Yeah. He looks at me and he goes, you know, I, we didn't want to redo the wedding before because of how stressful it was. He's like, but looking back now, I don't want to redo the wedding because it was perfect the way that it was. And I just burst into tears. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So that's what we wanted to show you guys today and kind of go through. Uh, just a short stream today. I will be playing. No, now Hawk cannot get a PS5 because Hawk computer. spent all this money on this computer so that I can keep streaming and have fun with you guys instead. But with a new computer is more opportunities for different games. So tomorrow night, I will be joining Chuck em Up 23 on stream and we'll be playing Phasmophobia. You heard that right. Scary stream. Phasmophobia. So it is a scary stream. The sound alerts will be working. Y'all can have whatever fun you want. I've never played it before. I literally turned it on today to make sure it was going or to make sure it would work. And it does. So tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Phasmophobia right here on the channel. Me and Chuck em Up 23 who I will send you guys into a raid now to hang out with. Uh, so you can get to know him and hang out a little bit before our scary stream tomorrow. Uh, if he's on, let me see. Chuck. I'm up. 23 is on. He's playing Beyond Two Souls right now. Krampus Halloween scare me stream. It's like a like a now married scare me stream. Also, I was setting up the Nuzlocke today because we're doing a Nuzlocke on Pokemon Heart Gold. My favorite Pokemon game. That'll be coming sometime later this month. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for hanging out and talking about our wedding with us and having a pizza party, even though I barely ate any pizza because I didn't want to make chewy noises on the uh, on the stream. I'm like Birdie here. <laughs> Thank, I don't care. Say goodnight to everyone in the chat. You've all been amazing. Make sure to give a big warm hug and just type raid in big letters for Chuck. We're going to go start the raid in a little bit. Everybody just type like this. Just this. Just hey, raid. Thanks for hanging out, y'all. And I will see y'all. <laughs> Bye, Tony. Next time. How'd you end? Because this is just going to be a short stream. I did not do it. Oh, now.